To me, when I look at envisioning somebody winning the Royal Rumble, I look at it fitting into one of three key categories to potentially justify the decision. One could be the obvious one that traditionally a lot of fans like, the newer, upstart, fresher face that you've been building up for a period of time, giving them exceedingly, increasingly more important victories at signature pay-per-views against more signature and important opponents and so forth. And the Royal Rumble is kind of cementing them as a future big-time player, a future big-time star. That certainly is one utilization for the Royal Rumble. It's a logical one. Another one to me would be that you're looking at a top guy that you want to revitalize a little bit or a top guy that you really want to put over the top heading into your biggest show. You really want to cement them as the main event attraction for your upcoming WrestleMania show. It doesn't always have to be the new guy in the fresh face that indicates they should win the Royal Rumble. You know, you look at 2001, Steve Austin winning the Rumble. You didn't have to have him win the Rumble, but with where you were going and who he was going to end up facing in The Rock, that's where you ended up going. He was a top guy, clearly established, but you threw the Rumble victory behind him to launch that WrestleMania story to a whole different level. And then you got the third option where you have a talent, you have a character that is over enough or already immersed or getting immersed into a story that is interesting enough, compelling enough, or requiring enough of that individual winning the Royal Rumble. And I think back to the 2009 Royal Rumble and the stuff they were doing with Randy Orton. Like, you had gotten to that point where it was so obvious that he was going to be the Rumble winner, but it made sense at that particular time because of where you were going with Triple H, so on and so forth. But again, talking about it, like the character was there, enough of the angle, the story was there that the right call was to have him win the Royal Rumble. Like To me, those are the three most logical options that you have. Maybe you would throw in, it's a big name from the past, that you have them return and they win the Rumble or they've been out for a period of time due to injury. You think of 2010 and Edge winning it. But even in that particular case, when you talk about Edge, you say, this is a top guy that you wanted to put a little bit more on, put a little bow on the top for what he was going to do at WrestleMania. And as a result, like those types of things make sense. And it still fits into that category I mentioned earlier. But when you look at the Royal Rumble in recent years, it doesn't always seem to kind of fit into that equation. And especially when I look at this year, and I see that they went with Drew McIntyre winning the Rumble, I was kind of floored. Now part of that, granted, is because I don't really watch Raw, not keeping up with Raw. I'm in and out on SmackDown. One week I'll watch, one week I won't. So, not paying a ton of attention, but still looking at it, and the Drew McIntyre thing just really kind of blindsided me and truly came out of nowhere. And when I say it comes out of nowhere, to me that is a re direct reflection of the fact that the WWE did not have their WrestleMania plans laid out already. They were scrambling. They were trying to go in a different direction. They didn't know what they were going to do, whatever the case might be. Like, to me, the way I've always envisioned it, and the way it used to be, is you could say the day after WrestleMania, you had relative confidence that Vince knew what his main event was going to be for WrestleMania the next year. And everything he did with all of his shows for that next year was building up to that main event at WrestleMania, and even the rest of the WrestleMania card was all going to funnel off of that. But he already knew... I envisioned this guy versus that guy. Or at least by the time you got to the summer, in case there were injuries, guys left the company, guys joined the company, plans change, reactions change, guys being over, whether or not they are, that changes. You get to the point where you start to get to the summer, at least, and you start to have an idea that they might know what they're going to do for WrestleMania. 
But to me, when you have that, that is a reflection of the Royal Rumble and who you have win the Royal Rumble match. And if you have it mapped out and you have it planned out well and you know where you're going, then the Rumble winner makes a lot of sense. Like, people get it. They might not always agree with it. They might not always like it. But they get it. And they understand it. You could understand and totally disagree. You could understand and completely and totally hate the direction and choice that they made. But you at least understand it. And for the life of me, I just can't understand the rush to put Drew McIntyre in this spot. If this was back in like 2009, 2010, when he was Vince McMahon's chosen one, that's one thing. But this is a guy, if I recall recently, months back was jobbing out to Roman Reigns. You weren't really doing anything with. And all of a sudden, it seems like in recent weeks, you randomly started to turn the fence with him a little bit in terms of what side he fell on. And now all of a sudden he's being presented like he's the Royal Rumble winner. And all of a sudden this guy that's never really been a main event attraction doesn't get main event level reactions, doesn't have main event level charisma, doesn't have main event level star power. All of a sudden you're throwing him out there and you're saying he's the Rumble winner. Now I will say the WWE within the Royal Rumble match positioned this relatively well in terms of saying Brock was number one. Nobody wanted Brock to win. Let's build him up like a monster and get Drew a big reaction by having him eliminate Brock Lesnar. Now that was smart. Then later on, when you get to the final two, it's him, it's Roman Reigns, and you're positioning it again with Drew where it's not about him. It's about how he's not the other guy, like an anti-establishment type of thing. You see this a lot in politics. Whether or not the guy or gal is qualified or not, sometimes just the fact that they're anti-establishment or they're not part of the Washington scene is all that you need to get them elected. And, and ironically enough, in politics, a lot of times you go with the people that are the least qualified, the least experienced in terms of the political atmosphere are the people that end up winning elections. Obama. Trump. Like, in terms of pure qualifications for the presidency, they were inherently massively unqualified relative to their opponents. But yet and behold, they were anti-establishment, so to speak. They were against the norm. And if you look at Brock Lesnar and you look at Roman Reigns as the norms, you're positioning Drew McIntyre as a, well, lesser of two evils. He's not that guy. And thank God he's not that guy. So that should be good enough. And it just doesn't really resonate. Like, whenever anybody tells me that I'm a size mark or a muscle mark, it is situations that like this that should illustrate just how feloniously stupid that assertion is. Drew McIntyre has the look. Drew McIntyre has the look. Drew McIntyre has really just about nothing else. Nothing else. There's nothing about Drew that screams out to you that he should be a main eventer. There's nothing that screams out in terms of ability to work an audience, to work him into a further, fervor, whether as a heel or as a baby face, that indicates this is the type of guy that people are going to pay money to come see. The type of guy that if they're flipping the channels, they're going to be so mesmerized and drawn to him that they're going to stop flipping through the channels and stay tuned and watch a Raw show. He is not that type of guy. Frankly, neither is Roman Reigns. And realistically, even though you have some that try to rebel against basic logic, Lesnar isn't anymore either. It hasn't been for several years. Now, maybe I would have less problem with them putting Drew McIntyre in this spot if he had actually beaten some signature opponents over the past year or two, if he had actually done interesting, compelling storylines and been a part of angles that could at least even a little bit potentially move the needle. He has none of that. It's just like they looked around and said, we don't want to do Roman again because it's going to go over like a fart in church. We got Lester in the match. We can't have him win. Otherwise, the whole concept of this is stupid. Who's our fail-safe type of guy? And it was Drew McIntyre. Like, to me, when a guy wins the Rumble, it should be a 
big deal. It's a big star getting this big moment. Or a guy that is ready to ascend to the mountaintop. Or it's somebody that's part of a story that commands this. Like you have to have this. And again, you got none of that. And just because a guy, in theory, has main event size in no way, shape, or form equates to him being a main event player. In no way, shape, or form. And when I look at guys that have actually been able to get over at some point in time, you've had Drew McIntyre win the Royal Rumble, but you've never had Braun Strowman win the Royal Rumble. And if we're going to go with a size thing, let's go with the even bigger guy and have him get his big redemption story against Brock freaking Lesnar, the guy he can't beat even though he's a monster amongst men. Show me you're going to get these hands. Or you go with a Keith Lee. Because obviously he is connected with the audience to a certain level. And again, he's unique on several different levels. But instead, you just kind of went with this vanilla white bread Drew McIntyre. And it's just weird to me. Like, I understand the WWE's in this place where they really don't care to make new stars. It is clear. It is obvious. But if, but if you're going to have guys win the Rumble, and you're going to position them to face off against guys like Lesnar at WrestleMania, you should do more to build them up in the months leading up to that moment at that event than just having them lose or not be there, and then, oh, a couple of weeks before you're four, and now all of a sudden you care about them. That, that doesn't work. That doesn't move the needle. And that most certainly does not make Drew McIntyre a main eventer. I'm sorry, but that's a reality. I was floored and stunned that he won the Royal Rumble, and personally, I wouldn't have had him anywhere near that. Well, I'm sure that will aggravate some of you, but tough. I know I'm an angry wrestling man, but... I am the Schlag Daddy. And the channel you're on here, OTRS Central, it's, it's for reasons like this. It's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Because sometimes we need some damn truth talk because we're just having anybody win the Royal Rumble nowadays, and it's ridiculous.